Hello, in this mind map, we are going to focus on the main pathologies that involve the female genital tract. This is not going to be a comprehensive coverage of all the different things that can go wrong, but the common ones and the important ones. So we would uh, want to approach this in terms of the lifetime or the life cycle of a woman, starting from birth and all the way to older age. So from birth, the first thing that we want to look at, of course, is congenital abnormalities. And this can be thought of firstly um, in the form of structural abnormalities. For example, some women are born with an abnormal, a physically abnormal uterus. Uh, this is called uterus didelphus, where there's actually two uterine cavities, two endometrial cavities, and there are several anatomical variants of this abnormality. As you can see here, this picture is taken from your lecture notes. The other main category, um, aside from structural abnormalities, would be functional. And these have to do with the hormones, the elaboration of normal uh, female sexual hormones. So often these are genetic conditions uh, where the baby is born uh, with abnormal adrenals or sexual organs, and these will affect the appearance and the sexual functions of the uh, individual. The next stage of life is when the lady becomes sexually active and of course this would be sexually transmitted infections or diseases. The easiest way to uh, really remember these would be to look at the types of organisms. So HSV is herpes simplex virus and HPV is human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus is very important because it can give rise to several pathologies. One of them is a condyloma. So this is a picture showing a wart. A condyloma is actually just um, the scientific name for viral wart, and they are often caused by specific types of the viruses. Um, HPV type 6 and 11 in particular can cause condylomata, and these can resolve, but they can also persist, and occasionally they can go on to more sinister conditions. A very important uh, condition that HPV is responsible for is a precancerous condition or pre-malignant condition and this is known as intraepithelial neoplasia. So when it occurs in the uterine cervix, it is called cervical intraepithelial neoplasia or CIN and this can eventually, if not treated, lead to invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Moving on, um, there can also, of course, be bacterial infections and some examples of organisms would be Neisseria, Gonorrhea, Chlamydia and also Treponema pallidum, which causes syphilis. This is very rare nowadays. Candida is an example of a fungal organism that can give rise to sexually transmitted infections and Trichomonas uh, is an example of a protozoal parasite. Now, um, pelvic inflammatory disease, this term, this actually refers mostly to ascending infection, which rises from the external genital tract and goes on to involve most or all of the female genital tract. This can be due to abortions, which can be either spontaneous or iatrogenic uh, termination of pregnancies, and um, sometimes even instrumentation such as dilatation and curatage can give rise to this pelvic inflammatory disease. So organisms can come from this group and they can sometimes be multiple organisms um, causing this infection. So it's important to know some of the complications which can be acute or chronic. Acute complications um, would include peritonitis um, as well as bacteremia when the organisms spread into the bloodstream. This is particularly dangerous because they can go to any other organs, for example, the heart or the brain or even the joints, giving rise to separative arthritis. An important complication also is the possibility of a tubo ovarian abscess. And here is an example taken from the Virtual Pathology Museum. You can see here, this is the uterus with the endometrial cavity. There is a leiomyoma here. And the and next say bilaterally are very abnormal. What happens in tubal ovarian abscess is that sometimes the tubal tissue and the ovarian tissue become very distorted and uh, they can be destroyed and they can form one big inflammatory mass. As you can see here, there's a large abscess cavity with some purulent material inside. So this can significantly alter the anatomy and give rise to very important complications uh, down the line such as infertility. 
Moving on to the chronic complications of uh, PID, that includes pelvic pain and um, also, as mentioned just now, things like infertility. Um, this can be from uh, tubal ovarian abscess with tissue destruction, or it can also be due to adhesions after healing, when there's healing. Um, ectopic pregnancy is also a complication, and again, this sometimes is due to altered anatomy, which can affect the passage of the sperm and the egg. So the next group of conditions that we're going to look at are pregnancy-related conditions. And we have, of course, infertility. So remember, pelvic inflammatory disease because of adhesions, because of um, destruction of tissue, for example, in tubal ovarian abscess, can give rise to infertility. And uh, infertility can also be due to other things like structural congenital abnormalities or hormonal abnormalities. Then there is ectopic pregnancy, where the fertilized um, egg actually implants in the wrong place and quite often this may occur in the fallopian tube. This is important because it may predispose the patient to um, acute, acute abdomen if the ectopic pregnancy erodes through the wall causes rupture or bleeding. Of course, in pregnancy, there can also be placental conditions. Some of these are emergencies as well, and these will be well covered in your ONG posting. Some examples will be placenta previa, where the placenta is too low-lying, um, abruptio placentae, as well as placenta accreta, where the placental tissue grows too deeply into the wall of the uterus. Eclampsia is another important condition. This is a medical condition which can give rise to significant morbidity and mortality, um, both maternal and fetal. This is essentially hypertension occurring in the setting of pregnancy. Gestational trophoblastic disease, um, this is a group of neoplasms or tumours that arise in trophoblastic tissue. And this means chorionic villi, cytotrophoblast and syncytial trophoblast, the placental tissue. Hydatidiform mole falls under this category and moles can be complete, they can be partial or they can be invasive, meaning that they grow into the wall of the uterus. So the molar diseases have a very characteristic gross appearance and this is taken from your virtual path museum. You can see that they have this vesicular grape-like appearance um, and when you see this grossly, we always think of hydatidiform mold. There's nothing that looks quite like this. And also in this group is choriocarcinoma, which is the tumour of the cyto- and syncytiotrophoblast. Choriocarcinomas tend to invade uh, into blood vessels very readily because that's what trophoblastic tissue does. Therefore, these tumours are often very hemorrhagic and they also often present with early metastases, for example, to the lungs. But these are fairly uh, responsive to chemotherapy. The next group of conditions is sort of quite difficult to classify or to describe, um, but they are the non-neoplastic, sometimes thought of as functional conditions, but very common and important. Included in this group would be endometriosis and adenomyosis. This is an example of a uterus with bilateral and nexal structures. You can see that the ovaries are cystic and enlarged. In particular, this ovary. There is a cyst um, which has this dark colored inner lining and these are called chocolate cysts. In the gross, uh, fresh specimen, they often look like they contain melted chocolate, and this is because of many cycles of bleeding um, and altered blood. So these endometriotic cysts occur in the ovaries, and uh, they are also responsive to hormonal cycle changes. Adenomyosis is defined as endometrial tissue, so this means endometrial glands as well as endometrial stroma that is located within the uterine myometrium. All these pink cells are smooth muscle bundles and these are part of the myometrium. Also included in this category are ovarian and paratubal cysts, for example, uh, follicular cysts from cystically dilated follicles. And remember, anything that enlarges the ovaries, including cysts or tumours, can put them at risk of torsion, which is a surgical emergency. Dysfunctional uterine bleeding is also included here, and this is when there is um, irregular menstrual bleeding that is not due to structural causes. 
And the last big category of uh, main pathologies is neoplasms. This will be separately dealt with in a different mind map, but just a few uh, pointers. It would be important to look at them in three respects. Look at the location, so which part of the female genital tract, um, external genitalia, internal, for example. Look at the tissue type. So knowing your histology is very important. It is also important to know that some of them have pre-malignant conditions which then can develop into invasive cancer. And some of the locations where there are pre-malignant conditions would be the ovaries, the ovarian surface epithelial tumors, uh, the endometrium, in terms of endometrial adenocarcinoma, and also the cervix, the vulva and the vagina, where there is pre-malignant states for the squamous uh, neoplasms.